this is Rocky Hall and I'm in uh, Cannonball, North Dakota, going to do an interview here and I don't know how well this is going to turn out because of the wind. We're inside of a tent but the wind is a little, little rough today so we're going to do our best. So if you can hold that, I think that actually might help. Okay. So uh, just my basic questions are who you are, why you're here, what you're doing and whatever it is that you want to say to the American people. Okay, my name is Jean Roach. I am from the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe, which is south of here, borderlining the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. My grandmother's here from Standing Rock. I'm here because basically we want to protect our future generations. I represent the Leonard Peltier Defense Committee. I'm a survivor of the Oglala firefight. We are planning on having a birthday party here on September 12th for Leonard. If you're in the area, come have some cake with us, enjoy. Um, one of the things I'd like to speak about is, um, well basically I ran into an FBI agent the other day and he says that he didn't support Peltier, but my question to him was, you don't support your U.S. Constitution and because there's been so many violations in the Peltier case that I don't see how anybody can look the other way, it's just so, you know, so many. At any point, Leonard's in prison, he's been there, he hasn't been moved to a medical facility even though he has an areotic heart aneurysm and it's really serious and he's also a diabetic and a 71 year old elder in prison where his co-defendants were actually acquitted on the basis of self-defense and he's a scapegoat. How long has he been in? 40, almost 41 years, and he's the longest held political prisoner. We consider him a political prisoner based on the genocidal attacks for over 500 years. We've had prisoners, we had Sitting Bull, we've had Crazy Horse that have been imprisoned, and their story has been not so great. We have, um, we consider him a political prisoner because of the genocide that's been going on for so many, many years. And he, we, he symbolizes a lot to the American Indian people. One is that once we feel like if he and when he is released, that will be kind of a good faith gesture towards um, coming together. I'm not sure the right word, but uh, people for the, for the, healing. For the healing. viewers that don't know the story, can you give? Uh, can you tell the story of exactly why he's in prison and what happened? Okay. There's a lot of people that don't know this story. Basically, he's a member of the American Indian Movement, and uh, the American Indian Movement was uh, was attacked through a program called Contel Pro, which is used by the FBI. And what happened there is since the Wounded Knee occupation, we've had a reign of terror of so many deaths and unanswered murders and unsolved. But at the time where this shootout happened was in Oglala, South Dakota. The elders and the community members were in process of pulling away from the tribal government which did not, which had attacked their own people, the traditional people. So whenever elders or anybody wanted to have ceremonies, people were being shot at, drive-by shootings in the 70s, people killed. So this was back in 1970? 1975, exactly. So this community was breaking apart from the Pine Ridge area and they needed help and that's why Leonard and them were asked to come and protect, do security, help. We basically had a spiritual camp related to, similar to the camp here in uh, Standing Rock. Um, basically helping people and standing up for their rights. We did community gardens, we did security. And in 1975, how old were you? I was 14. And I was there with my brother during the shootout. So um, most of us were under the age of 18. A lot of know. people don't know the story of what happened. Yeah, well, the story is, is that they, the FBI came and attacked our camp. We were uh, in a little small family area with the grandma and grandpa jumping bull and we were camped there. So the story is is that um, 
most American Indian Movement people were being targeted through this program called Contal Pro. So that what it does is manipulate, whoa, manipulate, you know, the movement, the people, the movement. So um, it's really a deep issue and. Um, Basically, Leonard was railroaded. His co-defendants, Dino Butler and Bob Robidoux, were acquitted on the basis of self-defense. The only one left that was maybe over the age of 18, like I said, most of us had escaped to the hills after the shootout were underage. Can you talk about the shootout? You were in camp that day, and you guys were just children. Yeah. You were just children. Yes. Actually, we were cooking, um, and I was talking to Joe Stunts, who was also murdered that day. He was murdered. Nobody has ever been um, convicted on murder of the FBI agents or of Joe Stunts. Leonard Peltier is in prison for aiding and abetting, and it has it's all circumstantial evidence. There's never been no eyewitnesses. Um, in the very beginning, the United States government started out wrong. They went to the Canadian government with falsified affidavits from a woman named Myrtle Forbear, who was abused and threatened to make these statements. And the Canadian court on the international level would not extradite Peltier back because he was up there, because he was caught up there, unless there was an eyewitness. So conveniently, they used this woman and abused her to make these statements that she was his girlfriend, where Leonard had never, ever met her before or ever seen her in his life. So that was one of the first international violations, along with all the constitutional violations which include um, changing the theory. Basically, the uh, U.S. attorney had actually told people that they didn't know who committed the, the murders. So, you know, but when you attack a people, people have a right to protect themselves. So know? the FBI came into your camp. You're cooking, you're cooking breakfast, dinner. The FBI came into our camps on top because we were like in the, in the trees and started shooting on top where the grandma and grandpa lived. There's about two houses, three houses up there. Dennis Banks was living in one, one of the homes, and he was um, going to trial in Custer for the riot of the Custer County Courthouse. And Joe Stunts was his um, bodyguard, but for some reason he didn't go that day. So basically, I never seen anything that really happened up on top except for what I've heard in court. And you, you heard the shooting and start, so you Guys just started running up there because they didn't know what was going on either. Nobody knew what was going on since they heard gunshots, people started going up there. And way. you had brothers and sisters and... My 11 year old brother was there. He, um, we all tried to walk out, but we were already surrounded immediately. And so we backtracked towards where camp was, me and uh, another woman, uh, Lena, and another woman, Nilak Butler and my little brother. How many people were murdered by the FBI that day? Joe Stutz. Just one. one. On that day. On that day. Yes. So, um... And how many people were arrested and taken into court? Taken into jail? All t none were arrested then. We escaped. Okay, we had help from local um, people from Ogala coming up on horseback and showing us how to escape. We, we were not from the area, so we didn't know. Awesome. Yeah, and we had, you know, grandma, grandpas, you know, helping us all the way until we got out of there safely. That's incredible. Yeah. But after that, people were arrested, and so he's the last one that's still in prison There's at this time. There's only four people that were indicted, and that was Jimmy Eagle, Dino Butler, and Bob Robidoux, and Leonard Peltier. Okay, Jimmy Eagle wasn't in the camp. And it's real ironic because the reason why the FBI said they were there was looking for... Uh, man's cowboy boots that were stolen, which is not one of the ten top crimes that allows you on a reservation. So there is a treaty violation there, you know. So Jimmy Eagle was not there. He was, um, the charges were dropped. So Dino, Butler, and Bob Robby went to court in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Iowa. And their basic defense was the misconduct of the FBI. So when Leonard Peltier was extradited down to, they changed the venue to Fargo, North Dakota, which really brings back a lot of memories of how this state's really racist. And that judge was so racist, he would just spin himself in a chair if he didn't want to hear it. And anything to do with FBI misconduct was not allowed. He made a ruling. So that was basically the whole defense. 
And that's what Dino Butler and Bob Robdu were acquitted on the basis of FBI misconduct. And they also attacked our camp of and so with, defense. And so with his, they moved his court hearing to a more... Um, racist area. Racist area, and the judge wouldn't hear anything. We have the same thing going on with our patriots right now in Oregon. They're moving stuff around, and they're doing the exact same thing. People don't learn from history. They don't remember these stories, and that's why when we were talking this morning, I wanted your story. Yeah. You know. Well, they used it on the Contel Pro of the 70s. They used it, used it on the Black Panthers. They used it on the Weathermen. I mean, we had the actual um, uh, hearing on uh, Minnesota Citizens Review on the FBI. This was back in the 70s where we took testimony, and some of this testimony is there. I don't know where to find it. I've been looking for it, but... It's buried, I'm sure. It's <laughs> yeah. buried. So any of my listeners out there, uh, can you help her research this? It, tell them exactly what you're looking for on the testimony. It's called the... Well, any of the testimony. It's All called the, the Minnesota Citizens Review on the FBI, and... Um, it was held in um, Minneapolis. And what is the court case relating to this testimony? Several, several um, organizations came forward with their testimonies. The Black Panthers, okay. the American Indian Movement, uh, the Weathermen. Um, uh, it's been so long I can't remember. What it is, <laughs> That's but, okay. But it's uh, a program. If you if you research COINTELPRO, it'll tell its own story. Can you story. spell that? C O I N dash T-E-L-P-R-O, Cointelpro. Okay. All right, so any of my listeners out there, if you guys can research that, you know who I'm talking to. So uh, if you can help this lady out here uh, in this organization, that would be awesome as well. One more thing is um, we're here at the camp um, in Standing Rock, the Chuck, Chuck Kea, uh, Chuck P. Oh, Chete Chuck P. Uh, camp. <laughs> Sorry, kind of hard for me to say. That's okay. But anyway, um, we are going to have a birthday party here on September 12th for Leonard Peltier. And what would you, what would you like to say about why you guys have come to Standing Rock to be with this movement? Basically, it's what we've been fighting for all our lives. You know, we relate directly. Um, the spirit camp reminds me so much of our camp that we had in Oglala. You know, um, at that time, just to practice our own traditional. Um, spiritual ways was a fight and it still is as people way back when Sitting Bull was killed and the, oh, the people of Mundini we had a power of prayer and it seems to excite the United States government you know they when prayer is a lot in Noglala we had arms but we were like single shot 22s and you know a couple of rifles maybe but Nowhere the the level that they expressed in the media as 30 well-trained guerrillas. And like they're doing here right now. Yes. They're spinning what, you know, we have pipe bombs. Pipe no, bombs. it's a pipe that you smoke, and it's a ceremonial pipe yeah. that you smoke in. <laughs> it's not a pipe bomb. Uh -huh. And so they're spinning the story. And again, we're going back to history. We're going yeah. back to what they're doing exactly what yeah, they're spinning they the did story. 200 years ago. Yep. You know, reduce us in stereotypes through the media. Um basically scared of prayer i mean and we are powerful yes we have a powerful prayer and you can feel in this camp it is so awesome i'm gonna say yes to that i feel it yes yep. well thank you oh thank you and this is rocky hall and i want to say thank you for everything that you've done and everything that you're doing uh in your lifetime back to the 1975 when you were standing up and you were just a young girl uh and her family was involved in this, and they were in the shootout. And she is a survivor, so I wanna I wanna say this lady right here is a survivor, and I'm just blessed to know her. Rocky out.